With a fresh and genuine take on the familiar supernatural mythology, Vampire's bold RPG ambition is to tempt you into eating your own quest givers. That sets up some big choices that generally pay off, though its combat doesn't quite have the bite needed to force you out of your comfort zone and into the darker, morally gray areas it so clearly wants you to live in. Vampire sets itself apart with its excellent recreation of London during the First World War, a time that coincides with the Spanish flu epidemic. It's a gloomy, somber city, explorable through snaking alleyways, cobblestone courtyards, dingy sewers, and expansive buildings that combine with the moody, string-heavy soundtrack to create a dense, sad atmosphere of a city on the edge. That setting is reinforced through the many, many authentic characters who represent the contrast between the aristocracy and the city's seedy underbelly. Have we met before? No, but I just need to look at your fancy clothes to know that you must be desperate to visit the docks at night. That's quite judgmental of you. Sir, I've led enough strikes when I had a job to identify you as an enemy of the working class. They're generally well-written and performed and only occasionally cross that line into hokey. A vampire doctor. My god, you're a terrifying creature. That's a relief, considering the forests of branching dialogue trees among the dozens of citizens often lean hard into the heady vampire lore. It's distracting, though, that most of them are poorly animated relative to the lead characters. But Vampire's story is generally engaging. It starts small, as our reluctant hero, Dr. Jonathan Reed, grapples with his new condition by resolving the petty issues of mere mortals before raising the stakes with a hard turn into the supernatural. I've come to embrace the everlasting craving. I have sworn to feed only upon the flesh of the dead. It is now my sacrament. The citizen system that binds all these characters together is a highlight of Vampire. Because you can choose to mesmerize and feed on just about everyone you meet, Characters are more than just side quest givers and information pinatas. As you talk to them, you'll uncover their secrets, and in the process, improve the quality of their blood, giving you more experience when you finally decide to sink your teeth in. In a weird and monstrous way, talking with the people and solving their problems is kind of like preparing your meals. The idea being that when you're not strong enough and need a quick boost, you consume someone to quickly gain a healthy chunk of experience at the cost of permanently losing any information or quests they've yet to give you and facing the negative consequences in their home district. This is Vampire's version of a difficulty setting that's supposed to force you into making a hard decision. While it's great in theory and fits well into Reed's Doctor First, Vampire Second character, I never found Vampire's combat to be difficult enough to force me to make that tough call. In fact, throughout my approximately 30 hour playthrough, I only died a handful of times and I finished the story without taking a life. And there's no difficulty setting to compensate. The majority of combat boils down to locking on, dodging around an enemy, and smacking it over and over with a club or a sword that you've crafted. It gets a little more interesting when you bite enemies to charge up your supernatural abilities like healing, turning invisible, or conjuring pools of shadow, and there are devastating ultimate powers that pack a horrific punch. But other than managing your blood, health, and stamina during a fight, the simple combat loop did start to feel stale sooner than I'd hoped. While there's a welcome variety in the enemies of Vampire, the most frustrating obstacles are the frame rate dips, the surprise loading screens, and the occasional bug. While I didn't find anything game-breaking, a few issues with quest markers not updating made progression more difficult than it needed to be, especially in the later stages. Vampire is a slow burn of an RPG, taking its time to ramp up its intriguing blend of science and the supernatural in an elaborately gloomy version of London. When it gets going, you can see the potential of the way it offers you more power if you consume its interesting quest giver characters, but Vampire never commits to this idea to the point where I felt I needed to make that sacrifice to succeed in its relatively simple combat, which leaves it feeling toothless and vulnerable to having a lot of its fun sucked away by technical issues. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more Vampire, you can check out the first 15 minutes or one of the game's boss fights right now. And for much more, keep it right here on IGN.